This morning I've popped down to Glen Affric, uh, which is a two hour drive from where I live, but it's been an area which I've been wanting to visit for a while and today the weather forecast was absolutely perfect. Um, we've got clear skies forecast for later and thick mist all morning, which I'm hoping is going to last for a little while. The only trouble that I have really is that this is a perfect example of where it's a good idea to scout locations first. So Glen Affric is an area which I am completely unfamiliar with. But because it's an area which I'm not familiar with, I need to be careful not to sort of rush to take some images and end up missing out on better images later. But at the same time, if I see something that's worth photographing, then I'll stop and photograph that, that image. And that's what I've done here. So I saw these three trees, and you've got the mist and the light that's coming through the mist. And, um, well, I had to stop and take an image of these trees. But once this is done, I'm going to keep on the walk which I had planned and just see if I can go and explore. So I'm kind of, I guess, scouting this location in conditions which are perfect to photograph it, which is sort of the wrong way to do things. So I'd always recommend that you scout an area at a time of year, maybe when conditions aren't right, so that when conditions are right, you know where to go. If this little group of trees looks familiar, that's because it probably is, because I'm fairly certain um, that uh, I've seen other photographers, particularly Simon Baxter springs to mind, photographing this group of trees. So I apologise for coming back to um, photograph the same scene that's been photographed by other well-known photographers before, because I'm not really into that. And, Quite honestly, I stumbled upon this set of trees completely by accident. I wasn't, I honestly wasn't aiming to come here. Um, but when I first arrived, the mountain behind these trees was obscured by mist. You couldn't see it. Um, and as I was standing around trying to decide whether or not to take an image or not, the mountain just cleared slightly, which meant that we've got this lovely transition of mist from down in the bottom of the glen creating separation between these trees and a mountain behind. So I apologise for taking a photo that's been photographed before and being somewhat slightly unoriginal in my composition. Um, but when conditions are right, I had, I had to take this image. The other thing which I've done is I've gone for a portrait orientation with this shot. And the reason for that is that there's this pointy tree here. So in a landscape orientation, that pointy tree is right in shot and it's just creating too much of a uh, distraction, I think, in the image. So by going for a portrait shot, I'm able to cut that tree out and really just focus on this characterful group of trees here with a mountain directly behind. And as you can see, that mountain keeps disappearing in the mist and then appearing again. So I'm just trying to take shots, like now, just when that mountain is visible. We're getting some absolutely stunning light now on the mountain. You've got layers of cloud 
It's absolutely beautiful. There's light hitting the mountain. If only a little bit of light would hit these trees, that would be completely perfect. These conditions are stunning. So you can probably tell now that that mist is really starting to clear. In fact, it's revealed a house down by the side of a lock, which I hadn't even noticed was there when I first arrived. But as the mist clears, we're also getting a little bit of light on the trees. But I do feel that I've probably taken the best images that I'm going to get of this clump of trees. I spent a good few minutes just running around a little bit like a headless chicken. And we had beautiful light hitting the mountain in the background and wonderful layers of cloud and um, I've just had a look back through the images and I think I've got one or two in there which are pretty good images. Even if I do have to give credit, I think, for this composition, perhaps to Simon Baxter, because I'm fairly certain these are the same trees that he photographed. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I must admit, when I set off this morning, when I first filmed that little bit of intro video, I um, was a bit worried that this was gonna turn into one of those videos where I'm running around in perfect conditions not being able to find any photographs to take because that was what it felt like when I arrived here and actually on the drive down to the car park which I parked in I drove through these beautiful birch woods and there was thick mist and they were looking absolutely gorgeous and I did stop once or twice thinking I should really get out take a photo um, I pulled into one or two sort of laybys and just had a quick look to see if there was anything I could photograph but I also knew that I was running a bit late and so it was this kind of thing that photographers, I'm sure many of you will be familiar with, where you're not sure whether to stop, get the camera out, take a shot of something uh, which might be average when you're on your way to a specific location that you have in mind. And I know I've lost some brilliant photographs by not stopping and taking photographs in before, so it's something which I'm always aware of. Um, but this morning um, I did stop just to see if there was anything to take a photo of and I think the issue was because I don't know this area, if I'd spent lots of time scouting out this area beforehand, I'd probably know one or two good birch areas to go and photograph. But because I don't know it at all, and I knew I wanted to try and get to this area, um, I didn't hang around there, even though conditions were perfect. Um, but I think it's paid off, actually, in the end, because when I arrived here, I probably only had a couple of minutes before the conditions suddenly became perfect for that shot and as you can see now I don't think the conditions are quite so good now so if I had stopped and taken an image somewhere else I probably wouldn't have made it to this spot in time. Um, so that's the way it goes with photography sometimes sometimes you've just got to go with your gut and that's what I did this morning and I think it's paid off on this occasion. There's just one thing which I wanted to point out whilst I'm here um, and that's what you might notice if you ever come to a location like this you might notice these younger saplings and um, this particular area which I'm in there's, there's loads of them and this is a really good sign because these saplings are an indication that the regeneration work and rewilding work that's going on in this glen is working. Um, so I did just want to point that out and I did just want to point out that if you do come somewhere like this, just be very careful about where you're stepping and where you're standing. It's okay to come and enjoy these places, but just make sure that you're not damaging any of these young saplings. So this is an area which is protected from red deer. Um, and it's an area where they're trying to regenerate some of this ancient Caledonian pine forest, which we've lost acres and acres and acres of this forest in Scotland. And there's only a few pockets of it around now. And this area is one such pocket, and there's also a few up uh, near in Torridon where, I, where I'm based as well. Um, so as photographers, I think we do have a bit of a responsibility just to be careful when we come to photograph these areas, to make sure that we're not causing any damage um, to that work which is being done.
I was actually just about to call it a day at this spot, but that mist came back and it's absolutely beautiful. We've just got this very faint mist going on and as you can see we've got some beautiful light coming over now as well. So I've spotted these clumps of trees just over on that hill there which are catching the light and that light is coming through and there's still a bit of mist behind them which is just separating them from the mountains behind. And I've got the 24 to 105 mil lens on at the moment which I've had on all morning but actually I think what I might do is switch for 200 on and just see if I can isolate those trees over there, that separate tree just on the brow there because I think that might work. It's quite a nice image. For the last few minutes I've been in full Sam headless chicken mode. <laughs> we had this sudden wash of mist that came through coupled with light um, and I don't know it was one of those kind of panic take some images sort of situations where I didn't really have enough time to have any particular composition in mind it was just whack the long lens on and see if we could pick out some compositions. Uh, so we'll see whether I, I actually managed to take any images from that or not. Um, but I've stuck the 24 to 105 mil lens back on again, which has given me that slightly wider, wider reach. But yeah, just taking some some images now with the clouds around the middle of the mountain and the trees in front. And there's no sort of particular kind of hero tree. I think when it comes to photographing trees, sometimes it's nice to have a bit of a hero tree, a bit of character going on. I don't really have that with this shot, so I don't know how well it'll come out, but. Um, Either way, I'm enjoying myself, we've got beautiful weather, wonderful mist, I'm in a, one of the most beautiful glens I think I've ever been in. Um, what's not to like? So the mist now has really started to burn off uh, and as you can probably tell by the sun that's illuminating my face, uh, the sun is out and it's I think going to be a bright day for the rest of the day. So I think I'm going to probably call it a day here and to be quite honest I am more than happy. When I first arrived, when I first started on my walk up here I really had that feeling that I was in the perfect place and beautiful conditions but I didn't know it well enough to really get good shots and I think that, that is a good lesson in making sure that if you are thinking of going somewhere and I've been thinking of coming to Glen Affric now for a while um, and what I should have done is come maybe in the summer or at a time out of season not to photograph it but just to have a walk around and get to know the area before I then arrived in perfect conditions with my camera without knowing where to go. And I think I've sort of lucked out a bit and I think I would say that it's down to luck. Um, I think I have got some images from this morning which I'm happy with but I definitely feel like I arrived in brilliant conditions and there are certainly times when it was a case of right just get the camera out and see if you can photograph something which has added stress I find and for me I do my best landscape photography I find when I'm not rushing and when I'm not panicking about shots because if I'm rushing around and panicking my mind isn't set fully on all of the aspects of getting brilliant shots. But having said that, as I say, I think I've lucked out a little bit today and I think I do have one or two shots from today that I can be pleased with. So I really hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. 
I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me on this and I'll see you in the next video. Before I finish this video, I've just got one last image which I wanted to share with you, which I didn't actually film, but I took this image when I stopped off for lunch on my way home, and this is just a handheld image with a 200mm lens on the camera taken in the middle of the day. But I saw this golden birch on the side of a loch and I absolutely love this image, so I just wanted to tag it on at the end of the video. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.